Hey YouTube, Hyten here and welcome to the video. In this one, I'll be covering the basics of OBS Studio and showing you how to get your stream up and running. All right, first things first, whenever you install OBS Studio, make sure that your version is 25.0.4. And if you already have a previous version of OBS Studio installed, all you have to do is go to help and check for updates. It'll tell you if there's any updates available. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings and go to stream. This is where you can connect your account or your stream key. Uh, it's recommended to just connect your account instead of using your stream key for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they do that. And once you click on uh, connect, it'll bring up this option right here. If you want to use Twitch add-ons, these are just basic, these are just third party emote add-ons that you can use. So if you have any, if you've ever used better TTV before and you have emotes added to your channel, you can go ahead and add them in there. This will show up in your chat. Uh, next we're gonna go to the output tab. This one's kind of easy. So basically, uh, NVIDIA has uploaded or NVIDIA has updated their NVNC H.264 encoder to vastly improve the performance of it. And it's now up to par with the old X264, which was software. And previously, if, you, if you've been around the streaming community for a while, you understand that H.264 and like the super fast preset was kind of like the norm and it was really good quality, but it was really, really performance heavy. So if you don't have a really good computer or a really high end CPU, this was a, it was really tough to get good quality streams with the X264. But if you have an Nvidia graphics card, you can now use this new encoder, which allows for far more performance and far more, uh, it just brings up the quality up to par. Uh, going down the list, you'll want to keep the box for enforced streaming service encoder settings checked. As all this does, it makes sure the information you're sending to the service you're streaming to is what is expected by the service and corrects any wrong information you may have entered in this process. For the rate control, you want to set this to CBR. Most platforms uh, recommend CBR. Uh, for bitrate, take a look at this NVIDIA chart um, that they created and it will tell you which bitrate you should be using based off of your resolution and your upload speed. So for example, mine is 6,000 because my upload speed can support far more than eight to 10 megabytes per second. But since Twitch caps the upload speed or the bitrate rather, I just stick it to 6,000 kilobytes per second. For the keyframe interval, you want to leave this as zero. Uh, all this does is it just means how many times uh, per second keyframes are inserted into the video. This is really ideal for high movement games such as shooters. So if you're a low motion streamer, you don't do a lot of movement or whatever, like car games or whatever, you probably want to, you can bump this up to like one or two and it'll increase the quality of those lower motion videos. For the preset, you wanna leave it at max quality for the NVIDIA and VNC. If you run into issues, uh, specifically over encoding issues, you wanna drop this down to quality. Um, most GPUs are gonna be, or most NVIDIA GPUs are gonna be able to use max quality just fine. Um, for profile, leave this on high. It has no impact on performance or quality. It literally just enables certain settings for the stream. So you always wanna leave this on high. For a look ahead, you don't want this on. It's not really useful for high motion games like like first person shooters, uh, racing games, anything like that. You just want to leave this unchecked. Uh, leave psycho visual tuning enabled. It basically optimizes the way that um, bitrate is used in the encoder. You want to leave the GPU at its default value of zero. This basically selects which GPU the encoding will be done on. Even if you happen to have two GPUs, the performance gains you would get by using the second GPU are super negligible. So leave this at zero. For max speed frames, you want to leave this set to two unless you're streaming on Mixer using their faster than light feature, in which case you want to set this to zero. Moving on to the audio tab, this window is much simpler and we will only be covering two options here. For desktop audio, you can either leave this as default, which will use the default device you set in Windows, or you can select a custom audio source. For me, my system audio is, route, is routed to the system channel on my GoXLR mixer. For you, it could be your headphones or your speakers. For the mic slash auxiliary audio device, the same goes for this as it does for your desktop audio selection. If you've already made your mic the default recording slash communications device in Windows, you can leave this as default, but you can also select another device should you feel the need to. Moving on to the final tab, which is the video tab. This is where you can set the base and scaled resolutions for your stream. And the base resolution is what you see and the output scaled resolution is what your stream sees. I typically set this to either 1920 by 1080 or if I'm streaming some really motion heavy games, I'll set this to 1600 by 900. And in order to actually get this custom uh, resolution in here, you have to type it in manually. You won't see it from the drop down menu. Uh, you only see the 16 by nine aspect ratios in this drop down menu. So just type in 1600 by 900 and then press enter and then you're good to go. 
if you're going to be downscaling, you probably want to stick with Lanskos sharpest scaling. But if you have issues with that, you may want to try some of these other three options. I would avoid using bilinear if at all possible. Uh, but if you have to ab absolutely use it, then it is there for you to use. And lastly, on this video tab, all you want to do is set the FPS value to whatever you want to be streaming at. Typically, this is going to be 60 FPS or 30 FPS. But should you find the necessity to use a different FPS value, there is a whole host of different options for you to choose from. So now that we have the stream all geared up and ready to go, now we want to start adding some scenes. So in order to add a scene, all you want to do is click this plus icon right here and we'll rename it. We'll call this the, we'll call it a test scene. Once you press OK, you'll see your, your newly created scene right down here in the scenes panel. And now it, here's where we start creating our sources. So once you've created your new scene, let's say we want to add our gameplay to it. So we're going to go to game capture. We can name this whatever we want. We're going to call it EFT. Now we're going to go to, instead of capture any full screen application, we're going to go to capture specific window. Now from this new window drop down menu, we can select the game we want to capture. I'm going to go to escape from Tarkov and you should now see your game in the background. One thing I do want to note though, is that you never want to use display capture over game capture. Display capture uses so many more resources than game capture does. And the only time you should really be using display capture is if you're showing off Google Chrome or your desktop or, or some other program that isn't as heavy as a video game. And the same thing goes for your, your webcam. If you want to add a webcam, that's considered a video capture device. You name this whatever you want, we're gonna call it webcam. And we're gonna click on the Logitech Brio. It's really overexposed right now, but hey, there's me. Um, and then you can click OK. You can resize it however which way you want to resize it. Uh, place it wherever you want. And uh, that would be how you add uh, your webcams and your sources and stuff. You can add a plethora of different options. You can add a looping video. You can add another audio input device if you have something else. You can add the video capture device, like I said. That'll count if you have an external capture card, such as an Elgato HD60, that would be considered a video capture device as well. So if you're wanting to stream your console gameplay, you would treat that the same way as you treat a webcam. You would just video capture device, call this, you know, HD60 or whatever. And then from this drop down, you would see the, uh, you would see your Elgato HD capture or whatever it's called. Uh, just cancel that. And uh, then you have your source there. The last thing that I really want to talk about is your audio levels. Um, if you're speaking at a normal voice, you kind of want to shoot for the, the yellow range right here, the yellow territory, the yellow area. You kind of want to shoot for negative 16 to like negative 12, negative 14 decibels. It's not too loud. It's not too quiet. It's just to make sure that your viewers don't have to crank you up all the way or crank you down all the way because you're too loud or too quiet. It's just a nice middle ground and a nice industry standard to shoot for that negative 16 to negative 10 decibel range. And that about sums up this video. From here on out, all you have to do is click start streaming and you are good to go. If you enjoyed this video or found it somewhat informative, please let me know in the comment section below or by giving it a like. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Before I end the video though, I just wanted to give a quick little reminder that I do stream on Twitch, link in the description. If you ever have some free time and wanna hang out or ask some questions, I'd be happy to have you. Uh, thanks for watching the video and until next time, stay creative.